into the house of the Lord on this beautiful Sunday. It is just gorgeous outside. I feel like when we have days like this, we ought to be able to have like the cars having sunroofs, and we ought to just be able to pop the top off and, and enjoy the beautiful outside. Wouldn't that be cool? Yeah. We'll, we'll put it on our wish list. Okay. 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 Good morning. Let us look to our announcements and see what's going on. This is charge conference time of the year. So if you run across uh, me somewhere out in the community and I have this look like this, it's only because it's charge conference time of the year. So a lot is going on. We have lots of meetings for people to be able to get together and, and get all of our ducks in a row for charge conference. Starting with tomorrow at 1.30, we'll have a finance meeting. And uh, so if you're on that committee, please be here at 1.30. Um, I think we'll have it available by Zoom if uh, you're not able to meet it and you give somebody a call. Or we might not. We might not have it available by Zoom. It may be by phone. We're, okay. we're not yeah. sure if it'll be hooked up by Oh, that's day. right. But Our internet's been yeah. acting foolish. Yes. Yeah. In other words, we don't have it. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, we might call you by phone. If you would like to do that, just let one of us know and we'll be happy to do that. Um, and in the afternoon, our very first tutoring program starts. Praise be to God. We get to meet all of our sweet children and, and the ones that we'll be working with and praying for. And, and uh, we're just really excited about that. Um, that meets on Mondays and Wednesdays, and Mondays and Wednesdays. And so um, we look forward to that. Mm. Ira says, if you forget what you're supposed to be having an announcement, she said, just look up at the thing and, and it's up there. So. Uh, oh, yeah. They cleaned out the pantry in the kitchen and found all kinds of goodies that belong to some of y'all. So please stop by the kitchen. It's out on the um, on the little table in the middle, isn't it, Julie? No, it's lined up on the counter. It's lined up on the counter. By where the stoves are. Okay. So it was lined up there. Yeah, so if you see something that looks familiar that you forgot you even had, it's probably yours. There, I mean, including like a, a denim jacket that's been in the kitchen. For what size? I don't know. <laughs> 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 so yeah, light denim, check out the jacket, <laughs> it belongs to somebody. All right, any other announcements? I have one. Yes, good. So we will be doing uh, our Halloween fun night for the kids this year again, and it will be on Halloween night here between 5 and 7. We'll have crafts, games, of course the candy, some face painting. So we're in need of donations of bags of candy, if you could bring them in. Have them to the church no later than Wednesday the 30th. That way if we're short any, we'll have time to go get some and be uh, plenty ready. We're decorating on Saturday the 26th, so if anybody would like to join in and help decorate or help with crafts or games, contact either myself or Sylvia. Okay. And if you're a big kid like some of us, <clears throat> and like to dress up in a non-scary costume. We'd love to have you come and, and help and, and uh, just make a big fuss over the children because they're just uh, adorable and they put so much time and effort and thought into their costumes. I remember when uh, my oldest was little, she would change who she was going to be at least three times before uh, <coughs> Halloween. And I always had to try to figure out what costume was I actually going to have to come up with for her. But anyway, it's fun. Any other announcements? Good morning, we got yes. good news. Good news. Oh, we saw a horse by one trip. I bought a horse, a walk on a horse, and I got first place. Stand up and show everybody. Oh, awesome. Look at that, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. watch it for you. Casey, we're so proud of you. That's wonderful. First place, that's a big deal. Yes. Good job, Casey. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, and a medal, too. Wow. And a ribbon. That's pretty cool. Any other announcements? Yes. 
Yes. Matt Zion barbecue tickets. Oh, Matt Zion barbecue tickets on the 18th. They're $10 a piece. And they have a wonderful baked goods that are uh, by donation only. We're just going to set it up here for a minute. Right. Pass it on? Yeah, yeah, pass it on. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a yeah. Everybody wants to be able to see that case. That's just beautiful. So, any other announcements? Yeah, I just want to say something about that hurricane. Really, he's already set it up there. Oh, yeah, yeah, we have an opportunity to give uh, for those uh, beloved people in the western part of our state. Uh, and if you would like to bring um, the ingredients for a hygiene kit or a flood bucket, a cleaning bucket, or I've also heard that they're taking donations of diapers and wipes, uh, we will be taking those to Pillmore the October 20th. And they are taking them to the Sacred Brown Center where they will all be collected and then taken on to the western part of our state where the people are just really uh, devastated. So we have copies of both the uh, cleaning kits and the hygiene kits. And you do not have to make a whole kit. You can just give some of the ingredients. There's also on the website, um, an Amazon list, and if you would like to just give and pay for it, it goes right straight to the collection itself. I thought that was really neat mm -hmm. thing to do. Yeah, yeah. You just put in there how many of the sprays you want to be able to buy and pay for, and then you just pay for it. Hearing no other announcements, let us pray. Father, you woke us up this morning and gave us the blessing of life yet one more day, and we are grateful. We thank you for the privilege and opportunity to be able to come into your house, Father, and, and join brothers and sisters in, in worship, worshiping you and you alone. And on this special day, Father, all around the world, different denominations, different kinds of people, different languages are all celebrating Holy Communion, remembering all that your Son and our Savior did for each and every one of us. And so, Father, as we come to your table this morning, bless us as we give praise to you. We thank you for this worship. We lift up our voices to you, O oh God, and we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. I told Casey I would get first prize if I stayed on the horse. <laughs> I'd be it right there. <clears throat> um, for everyone who's able would stand and join in the opening prayer, uh, call to worship. Almighty God, to you, to you are all hearts are open, all desires known. And from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And join in the Apostles' Creed as our affirmation of faith today. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now if you'll join me in our um, hymn of praise, I Come With Joy, number 617. We're going to sing the first four verses.
to our ancestors in many times and many ways. In these final days, though, he spoke to us through a son. God made his son the heir of everything and created the world through him. The son is the light of God's glory and the imprint of God's being. He maintains everything with his powerful message. After he carried out the cleansing of people from their sins, he sat down at the right side of the highest majesty. And the son became so much greater than the other messengers, such as angels, that he received a more important title than theirs. God didn't put the world that is coming, the world that we're talking about, under the angel's control. Instead, someone declared somewhere, and this, by the way, is from Psalm 8, what is humanity that you think about them? Or what are the human beings that you care about them? For while you made them a little lower than the angels, you crowned the human beings with glory and honor. You put everything under their control. When he puts everything under their control, he doesn't leave anything out of control. But right now, we don't see everything under their control yet. However, we do see the one who was made lower in order that the angels, in order than the angels, for a little while. It's Jesus. He's the one who is now crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of his death. He suffered death so that he could taste death for everyone through God's grace. It was appropriate for God, for whom and through whom everything exists, to use experiences of suffering to make perfect the pioneer of salvation. This salvation belongs to many sons and daughters whom he's leading to glory. This is because the one who makes people holy and the people who are being made holy all come from one source. That is why Jesus isn't ashamed to call them brothers and sisters when he says, I will publicly announce your name to my brothers and sisters. I will praise you in the middle of the assembly. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now it's your turn. Now. <laughs> Well, I'm excited. Y'all come on up here. <laughs> May Lou, I don't think you have met my husband yet. Come here. He was sitting with me the other night when y'all were having dinner. But So let me introduce you to him. And I fell in love with him very quickly after meeting him for many different reasons. But one is because he's pretty smart. <laughs> he is, don't, don't believe that. He really is pretty smart. His name is Joe, and I'm going to ask him a question, and he's going to kill me later because I didn't tell him I was going to ask him this question. <laughs> Mr. Joe, yes, you're a very smart man. Okay, Do, okay just take it. <laughs> Do you know absolutely everything there is to know about Holy Communion? No. See how smart he is? <laughs> he is. He's smart because his answer was right. And guess what? Nobody else does it. So, when we take communion, it's a very, very special thing that only God knows every single thing about. So when you come up for communion, don't feel like you've got to know absolutely everything about communion. All we need to know is that Jesus said, when you drink of the cup, 
remember him. Remember that he was willing to shed his blood for us. And when we eat the bread, we are remembering that he gave up his body for us. And so you are absolutely welcome to come to communion. Uh, your, your, your neighbors, your friends, your mom, your dad, everybody is welcome to come to God's table. And that's just such a wonderful privilege. Such a wonderful privilege. So let's pray, okay? Father, we thank you that you invite us to your table. We thank you that you have told us to remember you and all that you were willing to do for us. And today, as we celebrate communion with people all over the world, we thank you, we praise you, we love you. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, I look forward to receiving communion with all of you, and uh, it's just a really special day indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Got it? Did y'all get some um, children's bulletins and crowns and stuff in the back before you came in? Yeah. Can we show? Oh, good, good, good. Because the beach was my mermaid. Oh, mercy. How cool is that? I probably should wait, but I'm not going to, because I am so excited I won't be able to hold it in anyway. I'm going to be a grandmother. <laughs> My oldest um, is, is very close to what they call her biological clock. She'll be 40 in, I think, a year or two, and called me the other day and shared that news with us, and, and we're, just, we're just absolutely over the top excited. So hold my sweet Kristen and her, wife, and her husband, Eric, in your prayers, and, and just uh, I pray everything goes well. She'll just be the best mom ever. Uh, she'll, she'll just, uh, and, and they're supposed to move to Nashville, Tennessee, and my other daughter said, Mom, they're going to be all the way down in Nashville. I said, my car knows how to get there. <laughs> my car knows how to get there just fine. I will go wherever that baby is. I have to go see him or her and hold him and love him and spoil him and give him right back to her. It'll be just so great. So. Yeah, huh? Congratulations. Thank you so much, Casey. Let me lift up some of the... Uh, praises from the two Sunday school classrooms with praises for volunteers and spirit of unity with helping victims of the hurricane. We just praise God for um, the, the chance to be able to help others. We've been there, amen, and we have received uh, and been the recipients of, of help when we've had hurricanes come through here, and so we're grateful. We're praising God for safe travels, and for our church, that was a praise in one of your Sunday school classrooms, and, and that's just so sweet. The other um, Sunday school classroom lift up uh, first responders to, and, and civilians to uh, the uh, Hurricane Helene. Um, now, wait a second here. Maybe one over the Air Force. <laughs> it is written on this paper, y'all. <laughs> Y'all are awful, awful, awful. You will slip it right in here knowing that I am a Navy brat. <laughs> Y'all are vicious. Vicious, I say, vicious. Um, Tony Colley is home. Uh, praise be to God. They have a put off his surgery just a, a few more days, but uh, he'll be having surgery on the 16th. Is that right, Sue? Uh, so we're gonna praise that that gets finally done. Um, and we have power back in Spartanburg. Praise be to God for that. And uh, returning cell phone service and stuff like that. Are there other celebrations or joys you would like to share? Paul oh, is gonna talk things coming up. Whose birthday? Paul Barry. Paul Barry is having a birthday. It's Tuesday, isn't yes. it? Yes. Ah, 
Is it a big birthday back there, sir? Just a good old birthday. <laughs> I like it. Okay, good. <coughs> Thank you for lifting that up. You're welcome. Now, if you hear me coughing, I'm not contagious. I have what they call a long COVID, which has a, just a little cough. It's a, not a contagious cough. It's a very annoying cough. <coughs> I don't, I don't want y'all to think I'm sick because I'm not, well, physically. Always blessed to have good lungs. <coughs> but after COVID, it's just that little tickle in the back of your throat that comes up. Makes your eyes water, makes you crazy and mad. Nothing you can do about it. <coughs> Prayer concerns. Graham Morgan. Doing better. Is that is that right? <coughs> Um, I think A B did Mary talk to the most recent <coughs> Yeah, yeah, yesterday and uh, okay. that uh, they did another procedure another. to relieve some pressure and stuff like that. Uh, he was able to take in some fluids and stuff like that and retain it. So that was a good thing. But it's uh it's gonna be a journey. Second grade. Yeah, I think he's eight. Hey, she's eight years old. Bless his heart. And we are absolutely, absolutely going to lift up Linda Kimball, too. Um, she is at North General. <coughs> Don't know details. Uh, just uh, dog. Have you heard from her dog? Yes, yeah, she has like a blood clot in her um, portal vein. And they've got my IV drip that's breaking it up. Good. And hopefully she'll come home tomorrow. She's not able to get a room, so she's still in the ER. Oh, bless her heart. That's great. Aw. Does she have her cell phone with her? Do you know? She does. Good. Okay. Good, good, good. We're going to lift up our country. We're going to lift up Israel. We're going to lift up Sylvia uh, as she cares for Bob, and he's doing better. Um, we're going to lift up Tony and Sue Collie because having Tony's home is wonderful, but it's really uh, uh, created another whole situation at their house. So we're going to pray that they're going to get make it through that. And, and uh, we are going to pray for Miss Rosa Lee, who uh, is uh, just home trying to recuperate, make sure she's finished with COVID. Uh, we're going to lift up the Middle East, hurricane victims, and Evelyn Carter, a two-year-old who broke her leg. Oh, oh. Yeah, we were getting texts this morning. Is she okay? It's my niece. Did, yeah, did she have to get a cast? Or she's anything? got a splint, and she's getting a cast in a day or two. Oh, oh. So she broke, yeah. broke it pretty good then. And she broke her tibia. Yeah, she. Oh, well, that's fell off a step or something. I think. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, <coughs> sorry. Are there others that we need to lift up? I know we spoke about, you know, we spoke about hurricane victims, but especially those who are still missing. It's just so, so hard. Um, our former teacher here is still missing as of last night. They, did not they still have not found her. And there's a lot of them. Yeah. But they, they have not found her. She's just wanting to know her name. Right. So, um, <laughs> I'm going to say, because she's Kim Ashby, but she was Kim Modinger when she was here. But Kim, yeah. Kim's family especially. Kim's family especially. It's rough. I heard or saw a hand. It was me. I was going to say Kim Ashby and her family. Mm -hmm. Kim, thank you. Absolutely. Any others? <clears throat> then let us pray. <coughs> 
Father, we just thank you that you hear our prayer. And Father, we thank you that we can run to you and, and bring our supplications to you. And know that you hear them and know that you answer them. And even in those times, Father, where the answer isn't maybe what we wanted to hear, Lord, speak to us and open our eyes and ears to see your hand of, of guidance and provision and strength and comfort and peace, <clears throat> even when we don't understand all that's going on, you do. For Father, like you told Job, who are you, Job? Did you make the foundations of the world? And Father, we have to remember that you are the one who's in control. And, and forgive us, Lord, when we don't understand. Forgive us when we um, are, are sad or fearful or unsure of uh, an answer that we get from you. Help us, oh God, to keep our eyes and ears and heart especially always open to see your hand even in the midst of tragedy and loss. For you are always there, always ready to help us, always ready to, to strengthen us through it and, and give, us a, give us hope for the future. <clears throat> Father, we thank you this morning for the many praises that we have had through the week. Father, we thank you for good news. We thank you for your love and your goodness. We thank you for this beautiful weather that we've been having. And Father, we thank you for all those who help us when we do get in a bad situation. Lord, we do lift up our military to you. Bless them and their families, Father, as they serve and, and help others. Father, we thank you for doctors and nurses and, and EMTs and first responders everywhere, and especially those in, in hard places helping other people, especially the 10 states that were affected by this hurricane. And Father, we just thank you for volunteerism, people who love and care and, and want to help someone else. Father, we, we just thank you for each and every bit of a hand that's passed on to help someone else. Father, we lift up our entire world as we share in this holy meal. Mysterious as it is, Father, it is such a blessing to be able to remember all that Jesus was willing to do for each and every one of us, Father. We just lay ourselves before you. Empty us of all those things we try to fill ourselves with, Lord, and then let us be filled with you and only you. Father, we thank you for this time of worship and praise. We thank you for your word, which sustains us and which is all that we need for our salvation. Father, we thank you for church. And now, oh God, we want to tell you how much we love you. We want to lift our voices to you. And Father, when words won't come, let us lift our voices as one to pray the, per the perfect prayer, the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <coughs>
Hayden was like 200 years old. But, um, <laughs> one bread, one body, you'll find that on page 620. certificate of dismissal and to divorce her. But Jesus said to them, because of your hardness of heart, 
He wrote this commandment for you. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Then in the house, the disciples asked him again about this matter. Jesus said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. People were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them, and the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly, I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands upon them, and blessed them. This is the word of God for all of us who are people of God. Thanks be to God. Yeah, let's pray. Holy Spirit, come. Fill our hearts, O oh God. Show us your word in whatever way you would have us to see it. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In the summer, that yeah, it was about summer of 1995. I was a newly licensed pastor in the United Methodist Church. I had been a youth pastor. I had been a director of Christian education for a big church. I had been the director of the Christian education for our entire district. And now, at that point, because of God's intense call upon my life, I was sent into my first part-time appointment because I was serving with Laura Early at All God's Children some, and then part-time at Colerain United Methodist Church. Anybody been to Colerain? Mm -hmm. Don't blink. You'll go, you'll miss it, won't you, Don? Yeah, you will. But it's the sweetest little church over there in Colerain. And they had trained me in licensing school to do some of the things that I had never done in my entire life. That summer, for instance, I found myself consecrating the elements to serve communion for my very first time. That summer, I also conducted my very first funeral, scared to death. <laughs> yeah. And then that year, that summer, August 31st, I officiated at my first wedding. And I prayed, and I worried, and I studied, and I made those kids come and for counseling. I think six straight weeks they had to come, and I didn't want them to miss a one. And, and, and. Larry and Mary <laughs> were married at that little Colerain church that I don't, I don't think it can hold 50 people. Well, maybe if they brought out every single chair that they had back in the fellowship hall, and that wasn't too many chairs, but it wasn't a whole lot of people. Everybody just about was family. Um, except for the girl who played piano. She was a high school student who had just learned to play the few pieces for their wedding. And she was just adorable. She did such a good job. Um, but I'm not sure who was more nervous, her or me. It would have been a toss-up, probably. And some of the people there were family of the bride, and some were family of the groom, including children and grandchildren from their previous marriages. It was my first wedding but it was her fifth and his fourth. <laughs> so between 
them, they had seven marriages that all had ended in divorce. Now, they knew a whole lot more about weddings and marriage than I did at that point. And I did find myself learning from them. Um, they, there's certain things that they, they don't teach you in licensing school, but they said, oh no, this way it goes, Pastor. I was like, okay. <laughs> and, but I was still convinced at that point that I knew more about the Christian aspect of, of marriage than they did. But that probably wasn't true either. <laughs> and after that very first experience, I started telling couples, I don't do weddings. I help to start marriages. And I've been able to focus on the marriage while uh, helping the couple prepare for the wedding. And, and uh, except for this one exception, um, I get a call one afternoon and the uncle of the bride, I think it was, or the uncle of the groom on the other, was supposed to do their wedding and he fell ill and mm -hmm. couldn't do it and asked me if I could. So like an hour before the wedding, I just stopped in. I had to write their name every time their name came up because I didn't know them from Adam or Eve. Mm -hmm. and, and I did that wedding. But. And I, I've learned a lot uh, through the years and I'm still learning uh, some uh, this learning comes from my own experience. Some comes from the books I've read in, in trying to uh, help couples uh, make it through their marriages. Uh, some comes from the stories of the couples that I've done counseling for and, and have learned through some of their mistakes and some of their celebrations too. One of the things I've learned about marriage that surprised me is that divorce doesn't end in marriage. When my own marriage uh, ended in divorce after 31 years, um, I realized that it was really only the legal aspect of that marriage that was ended. Because we still had two children, we still had a relationship. Because we had two children, we still had to, you know, open up our pocketbooks and say, here, here's for those tires you need, you know. And so in that sense, Jesus is absolutely right. When someone who is divorced remarries, it is a form of adultery, he says. But the memories and the shared responsibilities of parenting, um, prevented that from being true. Now, divorce is not only a part of my life, it's actually a part of most families nowadays. In fact, I can probably only count on one hand the number of times I've officiated at weddings where neither the bride nor the groom uh, hadn't been married before. That's less than 5% of the marriages I've helped to start. That's pretty crazy if you think about it. So when I read this text from Mark, I, I find myself asking the question so many couples ask themselves, whose fault is it? Who sinned? Except when I ask the question, I don't limit the sin to one of the parties in the marriage. I would also include the pastor that officiated their wedding. I would also include their congregation who made the vow as they sat there and attended the wedding that we who are gathered here by God's grace will do everything in our power to uphold your marriage. So who sinned? The answer is, of course, we all have. We all have. In a familiar story found in John's Gospel, Jesus is asked to determine the fate of a woman who is caught right in the act of adultery. He begins by asking who among her accusers that day is without sin. We don't know exactly who was there. I don't know how many people and don't know their backgrounds or any. We don't know their stories, but I would ask a few more questions, maybe. Like, 
Was the man involved in the affair present? Was he out there amongst those people? Was her husband one of these people in the crowd? Uh, were there witnesses who did not try to stop it? Were there people who didn't want to become involved until it was too late? Did they all leave because they recognized their own contributions to their own failed marriages? Now, we don't know the answer to any of those questions, of course, but what we do know for sure is that Jesus turns to the accused woman and says those words that we all find so comforting. Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Now that sounds a little bit like a parent telling a child who leaves the door open yet again. Because it's an impossible assignment, isn't it? Of course our kids are going to forget to close the door again. Even some of us adults do. And no one here will ever walk away and sin no more. So when Mark wrote his gospel, he had several stories to choose from, and I'm certain that some were not included in the book. So two questions kind of stood out to me this year as I looked at this again. To help understand these stories, why is this story told? And why did Mark put it in this particular context? Because immediately, if you notice, that after Jesus stops talking about divorce, although really he was talking more about marriage than divorce, why is Mark go right straight to the story about the children. What can we learn about these two stories and why are they put in context with each other? And I really think that these two stories are connected in a very simple and beautiful way. Think about it. Most of us spend our childhood trying to become adults. Amen? Amen? You ask any child under about the age of 10 how old they are, and they'll even give you the half if they're halfway to their neck. Because they want that half of a year. I'm seven and a half. <laughs> well, I don't ever tell anybody I'm 67 and a half, although I am. <laughs> you know, I'm just crazy. And then when we grow up, Becomes exactly the opposite. We want to kind of roll back those years. You kind of round off those years, right, Paul? We round up to last year. Sometimes they even forget how many years I was at that particular birthday. Let's see, I was born in 57. And when we're young, we all want to get older and kind of do our own thing. We want to leave the doors open, so to speak, you know, without being chastised for doing so. But Jesus is here to tell us that that kind of attitude can destroy a marriage or a friendship or a relationship. We can't just always do our own thing and maintain a healthy, <coughs> intimate relationship with another person. The marriage of two people creates a new entity, a couple. And the couple cannot exist for very long if the individuals do not intentionally submit their will to each other. And I'm using the word marriage because it's part of the scripture. But I could say the same exact thing for those of you who are in good friendships too. Right? Many people think the reason we have so many failed marriages is the lack of commitment in general. But there's also a huge lack of intentionality. <coughs> Sometimes it's more one person than the other. Oh, yeah. But, but both need to give their full commitment.
commitment and intentionality to that relationship. I've often told couples who come to me for marriage that the best thing they can do in their marriage is to keep Jesus at the center at each and every day, do exactly that for each other. Our Father in heaven, thy will be done. And we don't ever know what this world is going to throw at us. The loss of a loved one, a child, a horrible thing in your family. We just, and, and none of us are perfect. None of us handle it the same way. And we're neither perfect spouses, nor perfect parents, nor are we perfect children. Thank God we have a perfect parent found in our Lord God Almighty. Because in those days where we just want to do our own thing, it's called sin. Sin leads us to that separation from God, from one another, and often causes our internal struggles as well. It's sin that leads to divorce. Sin that leads to poor parenting. But it's also the answer that we can find in Christ Jesus, which is forgiveness. Fortunately, God forgives our sins. And I think one of the most powerful reminders we have of that forgiveness is Holy Communion. Today as we celebrate World Communion, people all over the world celebrating in, it in different ways, in different languages, at different times. I'd like to hold out hope that in remembering our being forgiven, we'll find ways of reaching out our hand to others. And especially to those difficult ones that we've had a hard time forgiving. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you. And on the night Jesus gave himself up for us, he sat in an upper room with his disciples. Celebrating that Passover meal, oh God. When it was time to take the bread. The Passover bread he broke it gave it to his disciples and said take eat for this is my body do this in remembrance of me when the supper was over and it came to the final cup he took that cup he gave thanks to you O oh God and he gave it to his disciples and told them drink from this all of you for this is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, O oh God, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice that we might be for the world one body redeemed by your blood. Pour out your Holy Spirit, O oh God, on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we might be one people, one church, one world, forgiven and loved by you, O oh God. We thank you and we praise you in the precious name of Jesus. We will receive communion today up at the altar. We invite those who are able to uh, kneel, to kneel. For those who it's not comfortable to kneel, uh, we would like to invite you to just stand behind those who are kneeling. We will give you a cup on top of which will be a piece of bread. You are welcome to stay and and um, enjoy your bread and your cup. 
When your cup is done, if you will put it back here and we'll take care of that. All, as I reminded the children, are invited to the table. So we invite you to come.
would like to receive, receive. us enough to send us your son. Father, to say thank you or to tell you of our gratitude doesn't even seem enough yet it is. For we can never out give you, O oh God. Bless us now as we leave from this place that we might share that same love and forgiveness towards someone else. And Father, we just we will be very careful to give you all the praise, honor, and glory, for you are a great God indeed. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is the very last verse of number 617, I Come With Joy. So let us stand and sing. <laughs> May our almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit go with us from this place, dwelling deeply in our hearts this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Amen.